Hello. Hey, how are you? Oh, I, we, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm there back. You are. Sorry. I, I was pressing all my buttons. I forgot to unmute my mic. So, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Zoe coming to us from Fort Park. How cool is that? Yeah. This is what happens when your pricing's right, guys. You get to go <laughs> a day out at Fort Park. <laughs> we have been told you can't hear the screams, but we can assure you that the screaming going on from that ride is so loud. So we do apologise if we miss anything, but we're going to try and lip read, Johan. <laughs> no problems. Right. Okay, so welcome to this session uh, with Client Engager and Joe and Zoe from Six Figure Bookkeepers. Um, we're here to talk about your pricing insights that we've got from the pricing review and what we're seeing at Client Engager, um, and maybe a cheeky demo of Client Engager and how you price. And there might be the release of a catch up tool today live on this session. We'll wow. Look See if technology lets us do it. Um, and I've got a few polls to ask throughout the session. Um, but yeah, so why do you guys do the pricing review tool? How does it help your community? Yeah, well, thank, well look, thanks so much for collaborating with us on this. Um, you know, we've been running the pricing survey. This is the third time we've run it. Yeah. Um, we often have conversations in the Facebook community, the Six Figure Bookkeepers Club, where people say, you know, what what should my hourly rate be? That's a that's a kind of entry level question that is asked regularly for people like new people joining the group or people who are thinking about putting their prices up. Like I've been charging this for a long time. What should I really be charging? And we know, and I think we're going to go into this in the conversation today, that the hourly rate isn't actually the answer. Um, it, it's, it's a proxy. You know, we all, we're all we used to earning an hourly rate because we've been, most of us have at some point been employed and we've earned an hourly rate. And I mean, we, we're here at Thought Park and we were actually talking to Joe's daughters earlier because they were saying, how much is it to fast track and get to the front of the queue for a ride that's got like a 45 minute wait? And we looked it up and it was 30 pounds or something. So we were like, right, so is your time worth um 75 percent of 30 pounds an hour or not and it was great because your 13 year old was able to say well i don't know i don't like how much could i really earn and, and that's like, this is a great conversation so we always need a proxy for what our time is worth yeah but the the real problem with the hourly rate is it doesn't reflect the value of the work you do for your client it doesn't um it doesn't reflect the peace of mind the the mess that you unpick for them regularly or the tax savings you might be able to make them um the, the aml the admin all of the things like the the practice management that you're working on and setting up in order for you to get more streamlined but that might take you a lot of time at the beginning but are you charging for that in and uh, you know is that worth an hourly rate? it just there is so much where we know that the hourly rate we talk about it all the time yeah. the hourly rate isn't the thing but it gives you a starting point. Well, especially when you know what other people, when you when you work out how many hours you have available to work and you know how much when you how much you need to earn, if you figure out what that hourly rate needs to be, it's a starting point. But we very much think that we should be charging for the outcomes, mm -hmm. the transformations rather than the transactions that we are yeah. processing. Um but it's a good place to start. Yeah, and the survey came about wanting to understand, okay, what's the answer to this question that's asked so regularly? But then it's evolved into, okay, but we are talking about how do we prepare fixed pricing? What does that look like for a payroll? What does that look like for a self-assessment? What does it look like if you're doing monthly bookkeeping? And we started to understand, well, I think this is the this is the most data we've ever been able to gather from this survey around yeah. what people are charging for different uh, different services. Um, but still, it's a starting point. And, you know, when we were reflecting on when we deep dive into this today, what really do we need to get across? I think if you've seen the results and you've maybe looked at it and thought, oh my gosh, I'm not at that level, I need to charge more. I just want to flag that what we were asking people in the questions was always, what is the minimum you would charge? So that isn't, I still would say this isn't best practice in the market. I think we really need to review pricing in a different way. So really excited to talk to you, Johan, about uh, your views on this as well. No problem. So with that all in mind, I'm just going to launch a poll called Pricing Methods. If everyone can answer on the poll, whether you charge hourly, fixed monthly fees, packages, so you've got bronze, silver, gold, or what's named value pricing. And it's, uh, yeah. So that's, oh, fantastic, loads coming in. Oh, this is good. 
like 70% fixed monthly fees here. This is looking nice. good. That's what we like to see. Now, from Client Engage's point of view, and from my own point of view, I don't like to tell people how to do run their business. If you wanted to be told how to run your business, I believe you'd be an employee because that's what employees are done. They're told how to work. So you've run your own, you're running your own business. You want to make your own decisions. So whilst we think best practice is value pricing packages and monthly fees, we've built Client Engager to incorporate everything. So if you are charging hourly, that's okay. Client Engager's got an option for you to price hourly and send out a letter of engagement and stuff like that. But hopefully what this report shows is that you can look at your hourly rates and go, okay, I'm charging below the 32 pound minimum amount that everyone says is the average in this report. So I need to increase my hourly rates. Um, but I, I find it interesting that your report showed like 28% increase in hourly rates, but there wasn't a huge increase in the average monthly fee. No, I, and I, want, I wondered, I was thinking about this when we were writing it, I was thinking, oh God, you know, what does this, <laughs> what does this say? First of all, got to got to say the same people didn't complete the survey year on year, so we don't know whether that that represents the same audience. Um, but also, I think we've spent, you know, Joe and I have spoken at Accountex a couple of times. I feel like every time we go to Accountex, we take a different spin on pricing, and we've been talking about the hourly rate being twenty five pounds an hour for the last two years. Yeah. So if it had come out at twenty five pounds an hour again, I think we would have like cried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pleased we've yeah. heard that. But I, I do wonder whether, you, you know, we're all talking about we need, we're worth more, we need to charge more. That's great. Um, but I don't know if people know how to build that into their fixed packages. And I think that might be the sticking point. Like, how do I do that? How do I have that conversation with a client? I also think they're automating more. Things are getting quicker. So they might be doing things in a quicker time, but still not charging. If they're charging by the hour, the monthly fee is not going up. Yeah. Because they're getting quicker. Yeah, definitely. So only 18% of the audience have come back saying they charge hourly. Everyone else charges fixed packages of value. Packages and value about 5% each, 71% on fixed monthly fees. So that's fantastic. And so this is what we hear all the time is how do you put your prices up? And I think a lot of the audience look at a lot of the business coaches out there and the self-proclaimed experts and say, and they're all focused on repricing clients. I find the easiest way in my firm is I, I review our prices for in our practice management tool, aka Client Engager, I review that every three months and I put our prices up. But it doesn't mean I apply those to all of my existing clients. That just means my new clients will face the newer prices. And be, that removes that painful conversation. And then when I decide a client needs repricing, whether it's annually, six monthly, whatever it is, I've also got my new prices to price them on. And I can yes. move them up and down, the, you know, if I use my owner's discretion and give them a slight discount because it's a bit too much of a jump, that's my choice. But at least yes. I know by pricing my new clients on the new prices that I review every four, three or four months, I know those new clients are paying top dollar for my time and my team's resources and time. Yeah. And, and that no one talks about that. It? So it builds confidence when you're having those conversations with the new clients and people sign up at the new prices, you start to feel more confident in that price. So then when you do need to have that repricing conversation with somebody down the line, you feel like, well, I've got other people paying this. So I've got a proof that this yes. is valuable. I, I, we say exactly the same. Start with new people first, because usually what happens is people are overwhelmed. They get a discovery call and they're like, I don't know if I can take it on because I'm so busy, but I'm not earning enough because they haven't priced correctly. So the next discovery call, do the new pricing. And then what we like to do is get everyone you to do a happiness score on your current client list and try out on the ones that are at the bottom, the ones that you don't really like, that you're most probably definitely undercharging. And if they went you'd feel a relief and a weight off your shoulders. We then say, so new new clients, and then your three worst ones. If you've got a lot, if you've only got one client, then you can't do this maybe. But if you've got a group, then you, there's usually a few that you're like, they're not my favorite. And if they did go, I might be a little bit happier. Then you can practice on those and see how it goes there. Yeah. And you know what? If you price 
four or five new clients at your new rates, A, it gives you confidence. B, when you talk to that client that's not going to move and they're just going to leave you because of stuff, well, it doesn't matter because you're already charging enough from those four or five new clients to offset the income that they have. Would, you're going to lose from that person. So actually, you're setting yourself up to be back at step zero rather than minus a step yes. by talking yeah. to an existing client. Um, so there was absolutely loads of insight in this report. Um, about monthly pricing and stuff like that. We've spoken about how that can help. But one of the clear things with your report is confidence Absolutely. drives higher prices. So what what have you seen that gives your bookkeepers and accountants more confidence to that in turn results in them charging higher rates? What's given people more confidence to charge higher rates? I think, you know, one of the exercises that we do really regularly with our um, mastermind particularly is to say, like, go back through what have your wins been? Um, because I think it's really, we we naturally, oh, where was the bee there? Um, naturally, right, we focus in on the negative things. Like if something isn't going well or, or we're busy or we're overwhelmed, we focus on that all the time. And actually, if we can go back and think, well, actually, what wins have I had? What have those small wins been? And then we can realize the impacts that we've had. Like we might have had a really good conversation with someone and just gone, oh, great, that's done. Tick, move on. What's the next thing? Yeah. And we, we're not, we're not celebrating that stuff. Mm. But there's so much good we're doing. Yeah. And we often do this in, in the group. We're like, right, if we, we, we've just been uh, teaching our uh, success program at the moment live every week in the beginning. We always say, what's your wins been of the week? And people tell us the things. I mean, some, someone said once they saved their client £36,000 on a VAT return because yeah. they hadn't done. And I'm like, what? This is impressive. Is that worth 25, 30 pounds, 35 pounds an hour? No, it's worth so much more. But we do, we are very, I, I don't know if um, it's just the type of person that we are. We focus more on the things that go wrong than thinking about what impact we're having. And then the other thing we don't do is we don't shout about it. We don't tell on our social media. We don't tell our current clients, you know, anything yeah. that's been really good. Um, and I think we need to get better at that and build our confidence up and know that we're doing a really good job and we're worth the fees that we're paid. Actually, yeah, if you flip that, like, you know, thinking about, imagine if you every month or every week you put together a, like, a newsletter, which I think lots of you probably do, and you're able to say like, this month, these are some of the great things that have happened for our clients. And we're able to say, I saved my client, this yeah. client this much money. It doesn't have to say the name of the client, we save one of our clients this much money. Just keep reminding your clients, like, we're really valuable. We do really good things. Even if they're not seeing it directly in their business at that moment, reminding them, like, this is good. When a repricing comes, it's all good because they're doing this to, like, with the best intention. Yeah. Um, but I think that it's that. I think I think there's a mindset change. Firstly, from people going from hourly rate pricing to uh, fixed pricing, but also people raising their prices or be deciding it's the time to reprice. Because it's really easy to say, oh, you know, it's hard, not making any money. It's not easy to decide you're going to go through this process and reprice. Like, no. Even if you've done that client happiness score or you've listed your clients by how much they're paying you, it still isn't easy to pick up the phone or have that meeting and say, look, this isn't working at the moment we can't give you the service that we need to because we're not charging the right way and it's our fault um, and we need to change that and um, so this is what we're going to do um, the other thing I did was constantly spoke to my clients in their cash flow meetings about them upping their prices spoke to them about when did they last have a price review when did what you know when, oh I can see this supplier is charging you more and we've got that as well suppliers are charging us more we have to we have to increase our prices or else we're losing money every every month so we yeah I I think I, I did that quite well and also uh, even to the point of talking about exiting my business one day so when that came around people yeah. were like oh my goodness you've talked to me about this Oh, I love that. So it's, it's, it's how these conversations can help because we are we're helping them to coach them with finances in a business. We're not telling our clients that they need to be charging their the, the right yeah. pricing. Then what are we doing? And I think that's part of that mindset of um, knowing you're allowed to charge this because we bookkeeping. I think it's changing, but I think there's a mindset in the bookkeeping industry, um, and this is just said with real love. Because I charged by the hour and I, like I completely get it. Um, but I think we see ourselves as inferior to first of all accountants 
and also to our clients. And we look we look up to our clients as wow, they're building this great business. And um, and I I mean I remember having a client and you know he was one of my biggest clients. And I was like wow, what you're doing is amazing. Like what can I learn from you? And but that but that made me bring this energy of oh, okay, I'll do whatever you say rather than the energy of okay, we're both business owners. You've 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 engaged me because I'm an expert here at what I do, and you know that, and you knew you needed it. That's why we're here, um, and that's why you're paying me so much. So why can't I bring the energy of your peer at the table just helping you with your finance team um so we we kind of have to change our mindset there don't we yeah we've done a lot we've done some work recently as well about taking it to these conversations like with or without you energy it's like this is the price i'm going to continue offering these amazing services to the clients i work with if you want to continue on your journey with me, that's absolutely fine. And if you don't, that's absolutely fine. And letting go of the outcome a little bit more, because when people do that, it's a bit more attractive. Like, wow, you really believe in yourself. But I think a lot of the time when we go in with the mindset of, oh no, they're going to leave me. And I'm like, and we catastrophize it. Yeah. And we assume that every client's going to leave. Then you go in with the wrong energy. And we have to, we have to go in as strong entrepreneurial business owners that deserve the fee that they're charging. Definitely. What are your top tips then to give someone more confidence? What can they do uh, to sit there, get a price and go, that's the price? Yeah, I think it actually is. A, it starts with a bit of a personal development journey within. So, it, you know, like it might sound a bit woo, um, but I think we've all got to work on ourselves and may, maybe it even could start with if you know if you're really feeling like I don't know like sometimes I think we feel like we've lost our way and we've lost a bit of ourselves and and actually that's a lot of the reason why people become self-employed bookkeepers because they are working around other commitments and they need to like traditional employment hasn't worked anymore for the circumstances they're dealing with so it could be as simple as get a piece of paper this morning after this session and write down all of the uh, things people say about you or all of the times people have come to you because they know you're the person who has the answers i can remember like all, in my friendship group in my 20s i was always the one people said about i don't know anything about mortgages how do you get a mortgage like i was i was seen as that person so all of those kind of things like they, they might be completely irrelevant to what you do now but those little confidence points that remind you that you you are good and you know exams we've passed compliments people have given you uh good testimonials that you've had great interactions you've had where you've saved someone some money or given them some support or they've said thank you and they're grateful for something you've done that's going to sort of top you up mm. and, I, and i often think about the fact as well that if if we are bad business owners and are making a loss who wants to work with a financial professional that can't make money Yep. I, I wouldn't want to. Mm. I, I want to work with somebody that's doing well, that doesn't look very stressed, mm. that looks like they've, they're have they having fun in life and that they've got their things together. Um, That's what I want to do. So how do we step into that? We were speaking about this yesterday with one of our business coaches about who do we need to become yeah. rather than do, do, doing all the time. We're always like, right, I've got to do this. I've got to do this and I've got to do this. And then I'm, um, if I pass this exam and do this, then I'll be more confident. But actually, we can just be it now. Like, yeah. There will be a time in your life that you were confident or someone paid you that compliment and think back to them. And you, other people can see you like that, but we do, it wears us down. And comparisonitis as well, we look left and right and, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing? And the thing, one of the biggest things that we do to help people come up with what they should be charging is we call it our perfect P&L. And we work backwards and we work out, you know, what is it that you're, why, why have you started this business? Um, what is the money that you would like to be earning from this business after tax? And then we add back the tax and then we add back all the out outgoings and then we figure out what the turnover would need to be. And then we talk about, well, if you had your ideal client, what would you, how many do you want? Do you want a hundred clients? Do you want five clients? What kind of business do you see yourself working with? And then we say, right, okay. So, you know, we, we need, um, we need to have 10 clients. Well, we're going to have to charge them, I don't know, a thousand pound a month. Okay. Well, what does that service need to be to be worth that value and we work it out and every time people go well I could do that yeah I could offer that service if I didn't go into a pricing conversation or into a sales call going what is it that you want and you go out there and your market is saying this is what I this is what I deliver on and, and this, this is, is why the best at. yeah this, this is where I absolutely bring the best 
version of me and finance team to your business. Yeah, because we often pick up the scraps of, oh, you want a bit of payroll, or you want yeah. a bit of that. Oh, oh, I'll do a bit of admin I'll do as this. well. I'll do that. I'll yeah. do anything that you want just to get yeah. that fee. But actually, when I built that gold standard service and like, this is this is the best way I can serve you, and this is the price. And if they say, well, I don't want all of that, and I say, that's fine, because you can have it in a quarter, you know, or three months' time, when I've proved myself and they often came back and said, can I have that extra thing? You know, if you yeah. sell the full package on day one and they know what's available, that's the other thing. How many times do we have clients come to us and go, my accountant doesn't do this. Of course your accountant would do it, but you, you didn't ask them and they didn't tell you that they could. Yeah. yeah we don't have sales brochures, do we? No. Um, Catherine Freeman said in the, in the uh, questions, uh, it's very different to say the price is the price when you're established versus a startup how would you tackle this as a startup now i did a post on this on linkedin maybe a month or two ago that kind of took off and i just turned around to the alleged self-proclaimed business coaches out there that uh just assume seem to imply that you get from that from naught to confident in pricing overnight it's right. a journey it takes time and you know what what's more important you achieving someone saying oh well, you should be charging a minimum of this for that job when when you're starting out or actually getting some recognition financial recognition to cover the bills when you're starting out like yeah we got to be completely we got to make money I we got for seven sell. years i charged 13 pound 50 an hour while the accountant charged me out at 35. For seven years i did that because i was building my confidence I had small yeah. children. I had no confidence. And I, I talk about that. And I also talk about the fact that I went and got a job at certain points because it was right for me and my family. You've got to do what's right for you and your family. But what we are saying is if you're looking at the numbers and you're making a loss, you, you've got, you, we're not going to say that that's okay. You've yeah. got to make sure that you're okay. And sometimes people don't, they just do the work and they don't even look at the numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to know your own numbers, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, is it worth me doing that? Like the time I'm spending on this client, if you were to go back to the hourly rate, like what would I be paid in employment without the costs, without the insurance, without the AML? If I was working for someone else, what could I be taking home at the end of the day? And It's and, got to and, be more than that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Otherwise it doesn't work. And I think going back to your point about, you know, it's hard to do that when you're new. Yeah. It is hard to do that. And I think that... Um, a lot of the role that Joe and I play is that business education because the reason we don't, it's hard at the beginning is because we don't know it's possible. So hopefully what we're here doing is we're saying, look, just so you know, here's a benchmark for where you should be starting. So at least you have a starting point. Um, what was but interesting in the survey though, with the confidence thing, is that confidence grew up to about three years and then it went off again. And what that's telling, what I interpreted that is, is that people were thinking, right, I should be earning more now, but they've not changing their prices. And then they're thinking, actually, am I, am I'm I not actually earning the money I thought I would. But the first three years, you're like, I'm new, I'm learning, I'm getting my skill set, I'm building my confidence. But then you get to that point and you don't actually charge more if you don't like, and this yeah. is the people we're talking to, are the people that do know what they're doing. We speak to chartered accountants who can't get their practice certificate yeah. who become bookkeepers who then don't feel that they can charge effectively for their because they think they don't they don't I have was that person. You was that I person. Was that person. um but you know there are we we were talking about like the gold standard service what's the best that i can sell what's the best that i can do when I think about people in our community, one of the ladies in our community um, is comes from a project management background. She's very techy, IT, software, that's her thing. She's obviously an accountant as well. And, she, and for her, someone who's quite new to business, going out and saying, oh my God, I like my brain thinks in projects and Kanban mode and I want to break this down for you. Like her going in to sort out at some kind of finance transformation for like, a, a small a, a bigger small business and going in and who maybe they're migrating from one software to another working through that supporting the team putting the processes in place the controls that would be perfect so like you know it's seeing where like but then her going in and saying like if she was thinking and as she and she isn't but if she was thinking well I need to do my self-assessment level four because I need to do self-assessment that's not necessarily the right fit because she's so good at that project management so even if you're new you come and even if you're new to finance because there are people here who haven't been bookkeepers or accountants or worked in finance teams before there's something from your background that makes you 
different and it's understand that usp unique yeah. selling point isn't it yeah and bringing it to the table and finding the clients that really need what it is that you have brilliant so emma has just asked in the comments uh do you increase your base rate like the, the starting point of your fees every couple of years like you would an hourly rate i'm going to challenge that and say you don't do it every couple of years you do it every three months minimum yeah. like yeah. the government announces inflation rates every month it's on the yeah. BBC News once a month. This is the amount of inflation. Yeah. Now, Tesco and Asda are putting their prices and reviewing their prices daily. daily. Yeah. Like we don't need to go to that level, but we need to be doing it annually, at least in line with wage increases. I mean, software increases seem constant. Zero just announced more increases today. So yeah. we need to be doing it at all those trigger points, whether it's a inflation increase, minimum wage increase. A software announces an increase. We need to be reviewing at all of these points, not and it's just also, once every few and it's years. It's also um, transaction, like what you're also the other thing you need to be looking at is what the work is that you're doing for the client. Has yeah. there been some scope creep? Have, have they asked you to do, would you just mind doing this? Oh, by the, the other thing is like extra employees on the payroll or an extra bank account that's just appeared on the bookkeeping. Like, are you just going to let that run for a whole year or two years that was mentioned? Like, no, you can't. You've got so yeah. So you've got to up upgrade the like the base prices quarterly, but then you also need to be reviewing the transaction levels and what the what the set of services that, and the levels that you set out at the beginning are, and keep repeat, like reviewing that and then upping accordingly. Because if you don't, you'll just be giving the odd twenty quid, thirty quid, fifty quid away. Like yeah. with every client. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So another tool that helps give confidence is when a bit of software turns around and gives you your price. You answer your questions and software gives you a price. And software pricing has been fantastic for the last few years. We've got a built in free pricing calculator that allows you to build it out however you like. You know, if you've got a you can ask whatever questions and answer any questions you want. So you know, we've got users that are pricing more for AML high risk clients because they've said their AML risk level is high. So they charge more because you've got to do more checks, more admin. You know, I, we've got we one had, user. Sorry, I just was going to say we had one um, one mastermind this week that she's just gone through all the onboarding with them and she charged an onboarding fee, which not everyone does. But thank goodness she did because they've come back and they, they're not solvent and she can't actually, they're not going to continue. But she spent hours yeah working on just getting them set up with aml etc yeah so we i mean we've got one client that's got a we'll call it d blank head tax um so work out the name yourselves but basically he grades all his clients a b c d if you're a d you're that type of client and you pay right. considerably more than an a, a person so like there's so much you can do with software and very efficiently um so what i'm going to ask now in a poll is what pricing tool do you use so we've got spreadsheets and manual on there um so this will be interesting uh there we go 50 percent have answered we can't see it no. um so at the moment we're looking around 40 percent are still doing manual or spreadsheets um 34 percent are using client engager Right choice. Well done. Sixteen <laughs> percent are on Go proposal. Eight six uh, percent on ignition. One percent on Bright propose. But yeah, like forty-two percent of the market is still using spreadsheets or doing it manually. Wow. But I think part of the problem that there was, is the cost, was, isn't it? It is cost, but I I can't. The the my confidence came from using software and be able to present on the screen at the time that I was having a conversation, what the cost was going to be and build the, build the service in front of the client really helped. I don't, I, if I, I know where, how I used to do it years ago when I was charging 25 pounds an hour and I used to go away and I used to think about it for about two weeks and come up with a spreadsheet. And then I'd write a word document out and just, tell them what it was going to be and i had no idea because I, they would used to say how much was your hourly rate and how long is it going to take you i had no idea so i would just make up this thing and that's why i procrastinate over it and yeah. i had no confidence yeah. about it so i mean 
I, I think that's, do you know what? I, I know this isn't quite the, the thread we're going down, but that is the key. You know, the, the, the client expects to say, how long will this take and what will you charge by the hour? Because that's it, how they expect to buy a bookkeeping service. Yeah. Um, we don't expect that when we go and like engage a solicitor for conveyancing, for example, or a, a, some, we're both happily married, a, a divorce, divorce. <laughs> um, but you know you you expect to pay a solicitor differently. Um, so why is that different in bookkeeping? So actually, the like part of the key here in terms of saying expectations for what kind of conversation we're going to have around pricing is it, it moving away from the answer to that question and not talking about time and not talking about the price per hour. Oh, I think we've lost them slightly. Give them two seconds. If they don't come back, I'll continue. Okay. So why Joe? Oh. But actually taking the saying, actually, it depends on what. And I'd love to know the results of the survey. <laughs> cool. So the results are 35% uh, of the audience are using Client Engager. Um, and 44% are using spreadsheets. The others are split between Ignition, Go Proposal, and Bright Propose. I wonder how, how much different that would have been this time last year. And I think yeah. we would have seen more people doing manual and spreadsheets yeah. because pricing tools, which we know give you confidence, have been behind a paywall, which start out bookkeepers, a lot, even well-established bookkeepers can't justify the, the fee. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. because we've built it in at Client Engager for free of charge and it is as functional, if not more functional than the fully paid solution, we're hoping that that's giving access to people for people to have a pricing tool from day one, I mean, we give you a practice management tool with all the features, including pricing, letter of engagement generator, for nine pounds a month for naught to ten clients. Yeah, like yeah. it can't get any cheaper than that. No. And I can only hope if we have this conversation again in a year's time, that that spreadsheet and manual forty four percent drops again. Yeah. Sure. Right. I don't care where it goes. I don't care if it goes to client engager, go proposal, whoever. But we know how much more people that you, we know there's a difference between people that use software for pricing and people that use spreadsheets and the people that use software are charging higher amounts. Do you have, do you have data that backs that up, Johan? I've seen it in other reports. Yeah. I've not got any data myself. I, I bet, I reckon we have, but I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I wish I could bring them here right now. Yeah. But Thought Park doesn't allow that, but I, I will, I want to look into that. So um, that's a conversation for another day. Hmm. Definitely. Um, and so, yeah, so hopefully we can sit here next time, this time next year, and yeah. we see a reduction in manual spreadsheets because we've made pricing tools more accessible. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm conscious we are moving on with time. So, I'll share those. That was results. quite engaging, Johan. I think, like, yeah, I'd love to know how it, how it works, what tweaks. Are. Can I ask you a question as well? You know, Perfect. like in a world where software is increasing in price all the time and, mm -hmm. you know, we're seeing it every day, is what's the long term goal with pricing in, ter in terms of client engagement? You seem to have entered the market at a point where you want to make it really accessible. And that means you obviously are going for volume. Um, should Can we expect client engagement to still be working at that low fee, like low monthly fee in a year or two's time? So we've taken the leaf out of your guys' page. You know how you keep telling bookkeepers and accountants, you're running a business, run it like a business. Mm. Yeah, we've done the same with Client Engager. So normal businesses don't depend on hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds of investment from hedge funds and stuff, right? They, they start up small, they build, they scale up their staff team according, as they can afford new staff. And... That's how that's how business works. And that's how we've built Client Engager. Like there's no hedge funds, there's no investment. Like yeah. it's only mine and Andy's time and that got us off up and running. You know, we we went to our the public, the market as it were, January last year properly. By May last year, we were running at a monthly profit on the profit and loss. Wow. Both cash flow and profit and loss. And we've been positive in cash flow ever since. And as we get new subscribers, we grow the team. So on Monday, a new developer started. We're currently recruiting for our first customer success person 
because we can afford to do it because we've grown the business. So we're just running this business like you tell bookkeepers and accountants to run their businesses. Yeah. And that's the difference. So because we're doing that, we're profitable. Like yeah, we wow. don't need to put our prices up to pay our investors back. Mm. Like it, just run it like a proper business. Yeah. That's, and that's the and I think, you know, and that's really important to hear, you know, Joe and I were talking about, you know, we can all work out what do we need to take out of our business. We can add back tax, we can add back costs, then we can decide how many clients do we want to support? What does the package look like? But it's deciding what kind of business you're going to have. Are you going for a business where you support a few clients in a high, uh, with a high touch service? Or are you looking after hundreds of clients and you're giving them something that looks like a very different um yeah different level Low of support. touch highly automated yeah. Yeah. less yeah. you know communication yeah. that yeah, kind of like, decided like this is what our software is going to be like and this is what the price is going to be and that means it's going to be accessible um yeah. and so that sort of sets an expectation for it's about values sorry that was a big scream then sorry right. i know you, um um really <laughs> made me jump um yeah, it's about the values of your business as well and how you want to and choosing and designing to build a business that you want to run and that you're going to be proud of. Yeah, and so like Client Engager, we don't have a huge, we don't have a sales team. Like if someone trials Client Engager and they don't sign up, you're not going to get a phone call from us because I've got this no. belief that accountants and bookkeepers are actually quite intelligent people. So if they've Mostly, assessed yeah. out, <laughs> if they've taken a trial out and they've assessed our software, and they've decided it's not yeah. for them. Who am I to tell them they're wrong? I shouldn't need a sales team to go and say, no, you're wrong. Yeah. Or my software is not getting the message across itself. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. So we don't have a sales team. So we're not wasting money there. We've built our community of users. So you know, I go live to our users every Wednesday night to answer their yeah. questions, show them the latest features because that i can then you know I'll, every live we get about 50 attendees yeah or i could have a team of support people sat answering calls yeah but our email response time this month is 14 minutes on average wow wow it's not been over an hour since jan oh, well it's never been over an hour yeah wow that's amazing like whereas other softwares i've got huge support teams they're not delivering those metrics. They don't have a community of users where the community are doing most of the support for us. You know, the Facebook groups for them. It's, yeah. it's, it's referral, yeah. But by doing all of that, like, you know, we've got 840 firms using this software now in a oh, year and a half. Wow. We've not spent a penny on marketing because Amazing. we don't need to because we've got other tools. And I think a lot of the bookkeepers and accountants, they look at other bookkeepers and accountants and go, Oh, they're using that method. I better use that method. It's like, no, there's other ways to it. Yeah. One of the most frequently asked questions we get in demos is, okay, so what, who are you going to sell to? Are you going to go to Sage? Are you going to go to HG Capital? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we've tackled everything else without the box thinking. Yeah. If we yeah. ever decide one of our shareholders wants to sell up and move on, there are other options. There's a management buyout. Mm. What about a community buyout? What if our mm. users were to buy those shares and we ran it like a co-op? Oh, yeah. Like, there's so many options outside of this, our industry that no one looks at. And we, we just watch, like, the Dex, the Zero, the QuickBooks of the world. Well, if they do it that way, then surely that's how all softwares work. And actually, it's not. We don't have to follow that method at all. And I think that's what gives Client Engage a, a bit of an edge, is that we are thinking outside of the community outside of the box and do you know what you've just highlighted there that you're a business owner and as a business owner and a practice owner you can have a business conversation with your clients and everyone here all 180 or so of you here are business owners and you can have a conversation like we're just having a chat right now about business and this is what we can do when we move away from the i'm not as good as my client uh, mindset and realize we have a lot to bring and you ask your, your you ask your clients what is it like you go live and you speak to them and you say what is it that you want to know how can I, how can we support you? Yeah. And that's, I think we don't do that enough with our own clients, do we? No, no, exactly. So we can't be doing that though, if we're spending all of our time writing out letters of engagement, no. creating pricing, like 
like Joe, if you if you were spending hours of time doing that every time you got a new client inquiry, some yeah. of which won't won't pan out and say yes, yeah. then you're losing too much time. Um, so yeah. I'm going to answer a few <laughs> questions. <laughs> I'm going to answer a few questions in the questions section by doing a quick pricing demo, if that's okay. Oh, yeah. So I will share my screen, he says, when he finds which one it is. That it's one. not just me, Joe, who can't use Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I what forget. What is it with you really technical people that can't use Zoom? <laughs> I can use it, it's fine, and I'm not taking. It's more my eyesight. I can't work out which. <laughs> they've, they've shrunk the screens to such a size, I can't work out which one I'm about to share. Okay, so this is in Client Engager, we're logged in. Um, so there's absolutely tons of functionality in Client Engager. If you want a quick demo, there is a 12 minute video on our website. You can go and watch that. Go into our community and join us on a weekly live, which is on Zoom every week. And I will answer any questions there live and also show you what's coming up. Can but, you just explain, so, sorry, the website, yeah. is it clientengager.com? It's engager.app. Right, okay. So outside of the box. <laughs> Yeah, and can, and also your um your group is called Practice Excellence by Client Engager on Facebook. Is that right? Practice Management Excellence by Client Engager because we're right, not okay. just. It doesn't matter what tool you're using. You can join that group. It's not just for our users. Um, it it's our fishing pond, as it were. Like if yeah. you know, the more we tell people about our product in there, the more people will sign up, yeah. and it's where we answer lots of support calls. But there's so many people sharing how they and asking questions of how does everyone do this part of practice management or and it doesn't matter whether they're using another tool or not it's the solution and the workarounds that they're looking for um so yeah so um i'm just going to focus on pricing in this session um so when we go into our client engager we can go to our client list and i can go to a limited company for example and along the top we've got some sections about pricing so step four is about pricing. Now, we don't, we try and give customization wherever we can. And we get some clients are going to be a pain. And they're going to want to pay annually for some bits, monthly for others, quarterly for others. Maybe they want to pay for accounts and tax returns annually, VAT quarterly, bookkeeping monthly, and their weekly payroll weekly. A lot of pricing tools won't give you that level of customization, but we will. So you can select at what frequency each fee period is. And we will then tell you, right, this is the breakdown of the services, the billing frequencies, and you need to create your invoices in Zero QuickBooks or Free Agent or Sage for that. So we don't create your repeating invoices. That's your bookkeeping solutions job. You can then go through, turn on the services that your clients asked for, and you can answer any questions that you've set yourself. So we don't tell you how to price. We're here to give you a practice management solution and a pricing solution, not tell you how to run your business. So you're not gonna get any books out of me or anything like that. You price how you want. I'm more than happy to share how I do it in my firm. That's not to say it's right or wrong, but that's some insight for you. So you can answer all the questions. So for example, here, uh, I'm going to say I've got 0 to 100 transactions. We're suggesting a £660 a month fee. It automatically updates. This is using zero. If I say Sage, oh, it's up to 1,200. Well, why is that? Well, you've told the system that you charge twice the amount for Sage users because you don't like Sage. It takes you longer to use it, etc. You might have the same theory with zero and charge less for Sage. It's up to you. And you can make these equations as complex as you like as well. So if you want to throw all sorts of weird, funny factors in, you can. So you go through, you turn on the services that client wants, maybe not a confirmation statement, and they're going to pay monthly for that, and so on. We always suggest the fee that your maths comes out with. However, you can also type over that and put your own fee in. Maybe you know they've come from an accountant or that charges a lot more than you and you're going to be a bit cheeky and charge a little bit more than you normally would. Or maybe they're a startup, but you can see a potential in them and you want to get involved early, but you're going to make it more affordable for them because there's other benefits to you in the long run. Maybe they're part of a network or something. You can do that. We're not going to sit here and tell you you're doing it wrong. We're not going to sit here and judge you. We're just going to give you the ability to price how you want. Then you go to next, and this is where you can put service details and stuff in. 
Um, but you don't need to do this to generate a letter of engagement. And then the new feature that goes live on Friday, this is our catch up fees tool. So this was literally went into, into the demo account today, ready for this. You're gonna be able to go to your catch up fees. You'd have already told your system which services are and aren't included in catch up fees. And the system will automatically work out based on the financial year for that client, how many months into the financial year you are. You, it will then tell you like, well, you're six months in. Now you can either keep that or you can overwrite it. Maybe you know, actually, I've got last year's and this year's work to do. So that's 18 months. I'm going to do 18 months. And before I played with it, this was six and this was six. But maybe the, the VAT returns are actually up to date apart from the last three months. So I'm going to set that at three. Maybe payroll's been up to date apart from the last month it needs catching up on. So I can do that as well. The system knows the original fees from the step four. And then it times it by the amount of months you've put in. It suggested the fee. And again, you can overtype these if you want. You can also add a different service that's not on here. So maybe I'm going to add these two services here. And I'm going to say, well, that's got six months to catch up on. And I need to catch up on the last eight months of the confirmation statement, for example. I put those over there. I could add a custom fee. Maybe I've got a, uh, a bit of work. I'm just going to do a health report for them as a one-off thing. Um, I'm going to charge them 200 pounds for that. The system then takes the total. You can apply a discount or you cannot, but then it says, right, catch up fees. Should these be paid in one go or are they going to be paid in monthly installments? The system will then look at it and go, right, you're six months into the financial year. You might want to spread this payment over six months if they're paying monthly. Maybe the client says to you, actually, I'm going to pay you over three months if you can give me a discount. OK, well, the cash is in our bank quicker. That's fine. So three months, I'm going to get, take, give them a discount of 10%. There we go. The system's applied the discount and it's worked out that it's now three months and it's worked out the monthly fee. Or I can go back to six months or whatever I want to make it, 10 months, it updates it constantly. So we'll go back to six months for here, uh, four months for here. And then it says, when's the first payment going to be made? So you put that payment in, uh, that first date in there. And I'll save that. And then you can go to your letter of engagement, you'll press generate, it comes up with your letter of engagement. And as part of your letter of engagement, yes, you've got summary of fees and stuff, but you've now got a catch up page. It lists, it explains what a catch up fee is. It lists all the services that you've included in your catch up fee. It lists how much catch up fee period there is, the fee, the total net, the discount, the monthly net, the VAT and the monthly gross. The client can't go wrong here. And then we put a payment plan in there. So the clients agree to pay this catch up fee over six months on top of their normal fees. So we've given them a payment plan to make that really clear. So you can then send that out to your client and they can e-sign it and that's it done. So that's our pricing and catch up fee. Quick and easy, obviously, there's going to be a bit more tweaking to happen before it goes live a week on Friday to all of our users. Um, but yeah, any questions, stick them into the questions and I will try my best to answer them. Joe and Zoe, have you got any questions? We don't have any questions. We were just talk, we were just chit chatting behind the scenes because we, we've seen Cool using this, um, Joe's husband, and he seems very happy with He's it. He's very happy with it. And I've, I mean, it's changing all the time. Compared to the last time I saw it, I'm like, wow, it looks really different. And this looks so clear. I love the simplicity and how it's so broken down. And catch up fees have always been a bone of contention because you don't have the flexibility to always make them how you want them to be shown or yeah. like you could, you didn't have any um ways of changing it so i'm i'm really really liking this brilliant yeah so uh, a few questions are coming in um do they have to set up a direct debit when signing the proposal we've not got a payment solution at the moment we've got something called engager pay coming out later this year which will be direct debit card and open banking 
you can decide how your clients pay you, whichever method, and you can build that into their onboarding process. Um, at the moment, it's standalone using Go, Go Cardless or Stripe or whatever you're using at the moment. Um, and we've done that one, done that one. Uh, our client, our engagement letters provided by Client Engager. So we give you a template for an engagement letter as part of your setup. It's the AAT template. However, feel free to copy and paste your own templates over it. It's not a problem. Um, whether it's from your governing body, from a membership group, you can just go in and edit the templates to suit you and put the placeholders in to pull in the client information. Um, what we don't do is we don't review letters of engagements. We, we aren't charging you to provide you with letters of engagement. Uh, we give you a starting point and that's it. But for those that are worried about how often letters of engagement need to change, letters of engagement only need to change when the law changes. The law doesn't change every three months. It very rarely changes. If you ask your governing body when they last updated their letters of engagement, they'll tell you it was when in 2018 when GDPR came in because the law changed. Before that, it was 2008 when the data protection policy, uh, law came in. So don't worry about them changing. And you know, you're in a community, you're in several communities. If you're in the client engager community, you're in the six figure bookkeeper community, people are going to make you aware of there's a law change coming that's going to impact on our letters of engagement your governing bodies are going to tell you and you know what nine out of ten times it's just a new paragraph so it's not the end of the world so don't get worried about that i know we get a lot of people going oh you know who's monitoring who's saying our letters of engagement are legally binding it's like well that's what your governing body's for um cancel that i've done that uh, Sarah says, I see AEW requires specific footer on letters of engagement. Will there be an option at some point to fully customize the footer? There will be at some point, but that the ICAEW is a very small percentage of our user base. So we need to tackle what the majority want first. Um, so we do all of our development is dictated to us by our polls of our community. So everything is voted for and we do democracy at its finest so you know people from sage are complaining we haven't got a sage integration well actually only two percent of our audience voted for a sage integration so it's not a priority for us um, is there a workaround where you could like exclude that element and then use your own document attached or what, what could you do so in that situation you can export this and copy and paste it into your own doc into your own word documents or something um but yeah like the i ICAEW are one of the only governing bodies with this rule. It's very, very odd. Um, and actually, like, that's making their users' lives more difficult because they can't use tools easily, um, which is a bit of a shame in my mind. But yeah. Um, da, 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 let's have a look, see if there's any other questions coming in. Uh, for a startup, how in advance do you recommend we start using Client Engager to set up? So Client Engager is uh, free for the first 28 days for whenever you start. Then it's £9 upwards and we charge per, per clients, not per user. So when you've got your first client uh, upwards, it's £9 a month. So we make it as affordable as possible. Um, we do get some startups that say £9 still isn't affordable, and that's fine, but we know that it's the most affordable on the market. Um, so it's really up to you, and you can justify the, um, the investment on the software. But just remember, the sooner you get practice management software, the better, because it makes life so much easier, and it's a real challenge to move later on. You know, like... Every practice management software out there will preach you should have practice management software from day one. Completely and wholeheartedly agree, but then no one ever made it affordable for everyone. Um, so that's what we've tried to do here. And I think this is thinking of, you know, I think we always think these kind of things are a cost, but I would encourage, I, we're not here to sell you client engager. We're here to show you an, a, um, a solution. I think from the conversation we've had around the confidence that having a system gives you um, and the simplicity of bringing everything together and not wait, like not um, 
procrastinating for a long time about is it right have I done the right way what should my document look like like th there's a big solution here yeah but also think about how seriously are you taking your business because it isn't just about client engagement it's about your whole app stack am I building the business that I want to be running in a few years time um because we do need to put things in place that are going to help you know we were talking about that big goal earlier um and we were talking about like what do I want to earn from my business well, we need to design the business to allow us to do that. And it is going to need a level of tech. So just what what really would you be investing in if you were taking your business seriously? And what would you advise to somebody else? And if you're like for one, like, could you charge your next client £9 a month more to pay for it? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Especially with like, it's, it's, even the catch up fees or anything like that. If you, it's allowing you to price, um, in a way that like is completely bespoke, but also, th so that gives you confidence. Is it worth that nine pound, 100%? Um, and like we said, we're not here to sell, like, like you said as well, don't care what you use, just utilize something that really works for you and helps build you confidence so yeah. that you can price effectively. Because you don't think about it anymore. Just like, even if you're gonna go with a spreadsheet, yeah. get the spreadsheet working and then know that's how you do it. Um, because I think we go round and round in circles a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you know, like we know client engagement is not going to work for every firm. We know only 43.9% of firms actually sign up for us at like trial us. And there's quite a few people that, will, that actually get quite a bit upset. Like, it's, oh, it's not working. It's not working. And what am I doing? It's like, it might just not work the way you want it to work. And that's fine. But there's plenty of other solutions on, out on the market. Do have a look. Like, sometimes we do need to change how we work to suit the softwares, but most of the time, there'll be a software out there that will work for you. So, uh, Paul has just asked, is it nine pounds per client per month? No, Paul, it is nine pounds for the first naught, for naught to 10 clients. When you go from into, onto your 11th client, it goes up to 19 pounds. All of our pricing is on our website. Everyone pays what's on our website. No one gets discounts. I don't care what membership group, governing body you're part of. Everyone pays the same. And if you want to see what a firm with two and a half thousand clients pays, you'll see it because it's on the website. We're completely open, transparent and playing with that. There's no, oh, well, I've got this amount of clients. What are you going to do for me on the back door? Brown paper envelope under the desk type thing here, because it really annoys me. And I rant about it on LinkedIn all the time. So it's only right that I live by those rules. Um, so we've just put a poll out to see who is using what practice management tool. So 72% are using Client Engager, 8% uh, on Bright, 2% on Pixie, 14% on Spreadsheets and Manual, and 4% on Other. Um, cool. Like, I'd just say anyone that's doing it manually on Spreadsheets, the benefits you will get from using software. And it's not just pricing, it's not just practice management, but client portal, e-signing, like, you know, how are you, if you're using spreadsheets and manual, how are you sharing your client's data with them securely? Well, that's free of charge built into Client Engager. How are you getting e-signing done? That's free of charge built into Client Engager, you know, like you're probably paying 30 pounds just for your e-signing tool. So look at how much functionality you're getting for your money and what return you could get on that, in return on, on that saving would be my top tip. Um, quick question come in from, uh, do you plan an integration of tax calc for accounts and tax production? We are nagging tax calc. We're nagging a lot of software companies to do integrations. They aren't overly fast in responding to us. Um, so the more their users ask for it directly from the software vendor, the more likely they are to come and talk to us. Um, so yeah, it's always worth mentioning it to your software provider. Cool, I've got one last poll I'm gonna put out, um, which is probably completely pointless after today, after that last poll, just asking if you already use Client Engager, would you like a trial, etc. Client Engager is free of charge for the first 28 days. Absolutely no uh, requirements for card, machine, card details or anything for the first 28 days. Go to our website, take it out. You don't have to deal with us whatsoever. And we're not going to call you if you don't sign up. Like, as I say, we haven't got a sales team to waste that time on. Um, 
So yeah, Joe and Zoe, thank you so much for this platform and to work with you on the pricing review. It was really good timing that we got to work with you on this pricing review, saw the challenges that your users were coming up against so that it helped us tailor that catch up fee tool really nicely with that level of simplicity but customization at the same time um, in the hope that this time next year when we do another review hopefully we'll see more people using software versus spreadsheets and more uh, increase in prices especially the monthly fees yeah absolutely and if you're going to take a free trial and and it, you know what have you got to lose you haven't got to put even your card to, like i want a free trial i haven't got any clients <laughs> but, um but the, the thing i would say is put some time in your diary now so you've got a 30-day free trial right so it's the 29th of may now if you can put um half a day in your diary to really play with this and get used to the features before then because i think that's the thing with free trials we forget particularly if johan's team isn't going to chase you um mm -hmm. let's make sure everyone because it, it might not be now but it might be in three weeks time you've got a few hours sit down really get to grips with it have a go run some clients through it and see what happens um because otherwise i think that's the thing we, we sign up for things and then we forget and then we've missed our free trials so this is a real opportunity to take definitely definitely and and pricing is the stem of is the foundations of all the business like we know our pricing's right and we're profitable and that's how we're growing new team members constantly like if you can get your pricing right you'll get new clients easier and more confidently and then your business will grow and then you can spend days out at fort park doing webinars <laughs> This has been different, absolutely different. We've been, we're, we're, we're now in like a club thing because the battery nearly ran out, but we, you know, we, we're flexible. And do you know what? We, this isn't perfect, but you don't have to be to be able to provide a good service. And you have done an amazing webinar. Thank you so much. So many thank yous. Everyone's loved it. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Me and Zoe actually are going to get a free trial. Okay. We? We're going to, yeah, we're going to book some time up and have a really good look because yeah. it's really interesting. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for spending your time with us. Um, and you're going to get the replay, aren't they, yeah. Johan? Yes. So replay will go out within the next few hours. Um, there was just one question that came in about one-to-one -one demos. We do do them. We're fully booked for the next four weeks because we're that slammed and that popular at the moment, and we have been for most of the year. Um, wow. There's a recorded demo on our website. There's a Facebook group where you can ask any questions. If I'm awake, I will answer them. Like I was answering questions at 11 o'clock on Sunday night. Like, and that's common practice for me. Our yeah. emails are responded to within 15 minutes on average at the moment. So don't like, we don't have a phone number because we want, we want to focus on developing this product and yeah. supporting our wider community. But email in, ask us on Facebook, take out a trial. There's a huge help center with loads of resources and you can book a one-to-one -one demo if you want to, but there is often a four to six week wait due to the sheer popularity of the product at the moment. And I think that's the thing, you know, right? You've come, you've come in, you've told us it's nine pounds a month. So let, let's be realistic here with our expectations. It's clearly an amazing tool, but just like we said, book the time in the diary, try yeah. it all out. It, it looks like really clear how to navigate. So I don't, anyone who's used any kind of uh, software in their business will get to grips with this. It's yeah. just trial, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. much. Always thank a pleasure you. to work with you two lovely ladies and your uh, community. And I will look forward to talking to you both very soon. Oh, lovely. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.